Hey guys, what's up? A few weeks ago, I uploaded a really good average that I got on camera, and today I thought I would do some walkthrough solves showing you how I solved a few of the fastest solves in that average. Specifically, I'm going to show you the five solves that made up the second best average of five in the average, which was a 6.73 average of five. The reason I'm not showing you the first best is because I lost the scrambles and I was having some trouble reconstructing the scrambles from the video. I'm not very good at that kind of thing, so uh, the only ones I was able to reconstruct were the second best average of five, but the last solve and the best average of five I was unable to reconstruct. Um, either way though, these were some really good solves for me. So I just figured I would show you sort of my thought process uh, and how I solved them, and also take a look at the instances of inefficiencies that I did have in my solves, and also talk a little bit about my improvement in that area. So anyway, the scrambles and reconstructions should be down below, either in the descriptions or in a pinned comment. Um, so let's just get started with the first one. Okay, so this first solve was the best solve of the average of five and was the best solve of the entire video, which is the 5.10. Now, this solve actually had no inefficiencies. When I say inefficiencies, I mean using the solution that I intended to do. Did I have any moves such as a U, U prime, or a U3 that could have been shorter like a U prime, or in the case of U, U prime, could have been shorter by not doing it at all. And in this solve, I didn't have any of those. Uh, so let's just go through the solve and I'll show you what I did. What I saw here is this uh, green and red and yellow pair. Uh, I did do yellow cross I believe on all these solves and that just is because those crosses were better and stuff like this is sort of a glaring sign that that's a potentially good cross or X cross or free pair. Um, so I saw this and I saw that the cross wasn't amazing but it wasn't bad either and it was pretty finger trick friendly so I figured it would be worth it to do this cross uh, in order to preserve this pair and it ended up being very well worth it in the end. So in order to preserve this pair before I solved any of these cross pieces I did an L prime to move it out of the way because all my moves here are going to be F's, downs, and R's so that won't affect uh, this pair back here. So what I did is I did an F a down prime and then to get these two pieces in relative position to this piece right here I did R prime F R2 then I simply did a down two to orient those and inserted this last piece now it's easy to insert this green and red pair here with a three move insert then I rotated did this pair and honestly at this point I wasn't really seeing how this was going to be a good solve because these aren't very nice F2L pairs, but it worked out well in the end. So when I solve this pair, I have these two pairs which are the same. And normally this would be a really bad thing, but because of the way these are in relation to each other, if I solve this pair first, like this, it pairs this one up too. If I had solved inefficiently, this would have been very inefficient. If I would solved this pair first, then it would have not solved this at all. So I solved the blue and orange pair first, rotated, inserted this pair, and then I had an easy OLL, and I saw these corners, these two pieces match, green and green, uh, and these two are opposites, red and orange. Um, so because of that, I knew that it was going to have an edge orientation case or skip PLL. Uh, and because these aren't opposites, I, I'm not very good at recognizing for sure PLL skip cases, but because these weren't opposite, I had a pretty good chance of it skipping PLL. So then when I did this, not only did it skip PLL, but it had no AUF. Uh, so that was a really nice solve, and not only that, it didn't have any inefficiencies. Anyway, let's move on to the next solve. Okay, so this solve was the 684, which is the second best counting time, right in the middle of the average of five. Um, and this was a pretty decent solve with one inefficiency that I will show you when I get to it. Um, so looking at this, I did again do yellow cross, and I see my four cross pieces right here. Um, and with a U, 
I can see that these are all very close to being solved in relation to each other. When I put this blue piece down, then this orange piece goes next to it, then this green piece goes next to it, and then this red piece goes next to that. So that all fit together pretty nicely. Now, once I saw that, I knew that I had these pieces here, but I also knew that it would take a lot more moves to free them up uh, if I didn't do something about it before I oriented this cross. So I just took the pair out like that, um, and that made the F12 pair a bit easier. Next, I did a down prime and solved this pair in the back like this. Then I was keeping track of this since around the time that I was finishing the cross. So I did a U and inserted this in the back. That's a pretty easy one. Now, normally what I would think I would do is insert this pair first, but I'm pretty sure in the solve that I didn't see that pair um, because I did rotate and solve this first, which actually ended up giving me another rotation. Then I put that in the back, did this OLL, and then here is where the obvious inefficiency came in. Seeing this G perm, I should have done a U, because looking from this angle, I can see that these two are opposites and these two aren't, which means that the bar is back here. But in the moment, I didn't realize that, so instead of doing the U to solve it, I did a U2 prime, and then I saw the bar, did another U prime, and then solved it. So that U3 prime was the only inefficiency in that solve, but it's definitely something that I want to continue working on. I need to get better at doing sort of two-sided PLL recognition um, and knowing that if those two pieces were opposite, that the, the bar and the, the G perm would be back there. Um, either way, though, I'm happy with that solve. Anything sub-7, I don't really see much to complain about. So let's move on to the next solve. Okay, so this was the 873, which is the worst solve in the average, um, but of course I will still go through it, and I did again do yellow cross. So I have these two cross pieces back here, then I have my blue piece here and my red piece um, right on the R face. So what I did here is first I put this blue piece aligned with its center by doing a D prime, then I did an R prime, another D prime, and then I inserted these two pieces back here. And this whole time I was keeping track of these, um, which I knew would end up around here at the end of the cross. Then I did L prime back to, down, to fix this yellow cross. And I have this free pair, not free pair, but this F2L pair that is easily solved right here. So then I'm going to solve that in the back. Now this is unlike me normally, but instead of Breaking this up around its slot, I actually broke it up on the right side, did a U2, inserted this, and then I saw this orange and blue pair, set that up for the three move insert using the right side again, and then inserted that in the back left slot. And then here was another instance of one of those inefficiencies. Instead of seeing this piece here, doing a U and then inserting it, I did a U2, then noticed that this pair was set up like this, did another U prime and inserted it. So that was definitely something that I normally would see, I would think and hope, but in this case I didn't. So I should have done that. Either way, it gets the same result because a U3 prime and a U essentially do the same thing. Now, right away, I had a second inefficiency in this solve, and this was another not so great one that I should have been able to prevent. But here, instead of just doing this OLL, I did a U prime, and I believe I almost did the OLL from this angle, but when I do this OLL, I try to preserve bars. Uh, so when there's a bar here, I do it from this angle, and when there's a bar here, I do it from this angle. So I saw this, almost did it from this angle, then did a U and did it from this angle. I'm not sure if it was clear that I, that's what I was going to do in the video, um, but I do remember thinking that and having to stop myself. I'm not really sure if it's worth it because it just gives me a slightly better PLO, um, but it's just something that I've gotten used to. Whether it's a good thing or not, I don't know. It's just what I do. 
Uh, and then after that, I just had a T perm with no AUF. So that solve did have two inefficiencies in it, which wasn't great. That's the worst of the three solves so far. But anyway, let's just move on to the fourth solve. Okay, so this solve is the 713, which is the worst of the counting times in this average of five. Uh, once again, I did yellow cross, and I started without rotating from the scrambled orientation. So just keep green on front and white on top. Now I have my cross pieces here, 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 and blue is back here. And I also noticed that blue and orange are on their respective centers, which is convenient. And red is oriented properly to be put on its respective center in the right orientation with an F move. Uh, so what I did is I knew I could solve this with a B prime and I could put this next to its center with an F. So I did a B prime F R prime to solve these three pieces. Then to do this one, I did a down prime L down. Now I can't remember if I knew what my first pair was gonna be in this case. I think I should have because it's, it wasn't too long of a cross, but either way, it was this blue and red pair right here, which I solved with a U2 insert. And for some reason with all the options present here, I chose to go with what I would see now as probably the worst one, but it's just what I saw in the moment, so uh, it's what I did. I rotated and solved the green and red pair in the back. Then I'm left with this absolutely terrible case, which I solved this one first with on the left. And then I took this one out and inserted that in the back with another U2. I did definitely luck out with my last layer case because this was just a back soon and a J perm. But that was definitely a poor choice on F2L from that spot. Going back to the spot where I made the decision to do green and red, what I should have done, seeing that these two pairs would be solved together if I did uh, the green and orange, is do green and orange first, then blue and orange, then red and green. However, that wouldn't have given me as good of a last layer case, so in the end, it worked out okay. And a bonus about that solve was that I didn't have any of those inefficiencies that I had in the past two solves. Anyway, let's move on to the last solve. Okay, so this solve is the fifth scramble. It is the 633, and it is my best counting time in this average. And it's also the only solve here that I did white cross on. So this cross is slightly more complicated in the notation I used during the reconstruction, um, but it's actually not too bad if you just follow along. The idea here when I saw this cross and this bar right here was to make an X cross and to also, if possible, free up an extra second F2L pair. So what I did is I sort of started with yellow on front, but it was more like halfway between yellow and uh, blue on front. So I did a D prime to put these two cross pieces together, knowing that I had this one here and this one here. Then from this position, I did a small R, or if you're looking at it from this position, I just did an L. Then I did a down prime, R prime, to finish off putting all the cross pieces in the correct orientation to each other. Then I rotated, knowing that this corner was solved, so that if I inserted this edge, I would have the X cross. Did so, sort of did a wide U prime, and then decided that this would be an acceptable F2L pair to use as my second pair. So I took that out, and then finally finished off the cross, which put this pair pretty much right in front where I needed to solve it. So I inserted that. Then seeing this pair in the back, I rotated and inserted that in the back left. And finally, I solved the green and orange pair in the front right. Then I did a U prime and did the same OLL from the first solve, but this time I had a U perm. Once again, I knew that I would have corners solved because these two corners match and these two were opposites. However, I knew right away that I wouldn't skip PLL because there is a full bar right here. And when it skips PLL, I know that these two are adjacent, and so are these. Anyway, I did the OLL 
and then did a U-perm. Pretty happy with that solve, and once again, there were no inefficiencies, which is really good for me. So looking back on the reconstructions of these solves, I would say that I have improved a lot in terms of wasting moves during my solves, because I do remember that a few years ago, or even just going back a year or so, I had a pretty bad problem with doing unnecessary moves to scan the cube during OLL and PLL, uh, but that problem seems to have been fixed, at least to a certain extent. In this average of 5, I only had 3 of those inefficiencies, and 2 of them were in the worst solve of the average. And another positive from these solves that I noticed is that I didn't waste any rotations like doing a Y and then a Y prime. Of course, I still have a lot of things to improve on, and I have a lot of work to do if I want to keep getting faster and improve my solving. But I am happy to see that my solving has gotten a bit cleaner and a bit less wasteful uh, over the past couple of years. So that's pretty much it for these walkthrough solves. It's my first time trying these types of walkthrough solves where I walk through actual solves that I've done. I actually enjoy doing this video more than I usually enjoy making walkthrough solves, and I think part of the reason for that is that making this video really helped me to see where the problems are in my solving and where I have improved in my solving. Uh, I really hope that they were able to be helpful to you guys as well. Um, and of course, leave comments, suggestions, and any other things you want to say in the comment section down below, and I will try to get back to you or at least read them. So, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!